Good evening, afternoon or morning. Movie Cat is at the microphone and today I will talk about the American comedy. Good luck Chuck. In order not to lose this channel, I recommend to subscribe. A teenager named Chuck and he's, for his age, perhaps overly concerned about female breasts, friend Stuart. Play with the girlfriends with the bottle. Instead of a girl that Chuck likes, he gets to spend 7 minutes in the closet. Kissing a goth classmate, she says that she has been in love with Chuck since the third grade and literally pounces on a frail boy, who barely manages to escape from the closet. Offended by the lack of reciprocity, the goth girl wishes the guy bad luck, sending a curse on him. She says out loud that any girl Chuck spends the night with will soon meet and fall in love with another guy. Years later, now an adult Chuck spends time on the beach with his girlfriend Carol. She confesses her love to him, but Chuck does not have strong feelings for her and cannot, as he says, scatter the word with the letter L. So Carol, angry, leaves him. Chuck complains about such injustice to his old friend Stuart. On the way to work, the guys discuss what they will do at the wedding of a certain Casey who met Chuck only half a year ago and is now getting married to another. Stuart fulfilled his childhood dream and works as a plastic surgeon, specializing, of course, in breast augmentation. And Chuck is a dentist. At the wedding, the bride, she is Chuck X, unexpectedly makes a toast for him. She says it is precisely because of Chuck this wedding is taking place. Suddenly, Chuck sees a charmingly beautiful girl who sits down at his table. Cam is one of the bridesmaids and works at the zoo, taking care of the penguins. Chuck, in response, admits that he is a dentist, gives her a business card and flirts with her. Chuck's bride later approaches, sympathizes with him that he is still single and wishes him luck. She then tosses the bouquet, which unbelievably ends up in Carol's hands who broke up with Chuck just recently. In the morning, at work, Chuck sees a queue of attractive girls in his office, who have no problems with their teeth. He shares this strange phenomenon with a friend, when suddenly they see Carol in a wedding dress in a shop window. She comes out and says that Chuck brings good luck. Arriving home, Chuck finds dozens of messages on the answering machine from different girls, asking to meet. Surprised, but still not understanding, he chooses one of them. She explains to him what it's all about. It turns out that after that wedding, a rumor was widely circulated that after sleeping with Chuck, literally in a matter of days, any girl would meet, that her only man, who, without delay, would offer her to marry. Meanwhile, Cam is at work feeding the penguins with the help of her cool, but pretty stoned brother. The girl does not accept the use of marijuana at work and throws fish at her brother as punishment, but his return throw knocks the girl down and she eventually hits her head against a hill and breaks her tooth. Taking out the business card of the dentist Chuck, whom she met at the wedding, she calls him. Chuck immediately dumps the girl he was with and arrives at his office 20 minutes later to fix Cam's tooth. The girl is as beautiful as she is clumsy, so getting up from her chair, she beats her head against the lamp and falls on a tray of tools, as a result of which several sharp scalpels end up in Chuck's back. The wounds are shallow and Chuck has a reason to call the girl for dinner, arguing that a table knife can cause more serious damage. Cam apologizes but refuses. However, after 5 minutes, her car does not start and Chuck volunteers to start her engine with the battery. Connecting the terminals, suddenly Chuck receives a strong discharge of electric current through the fault of Cam. Another problem is that the girl left her keys in the locked car and Chuck volunteers to ride up Cam. On the way, she admits that her brother calls her Murphy, like the law of the same name, if something bad can happen, it will happen. Cam then presses a button and the roof of Chuck's convertible flies away. Cam doesn't have a house key either and after breaking the glass, she takes a spare car key at home. Then Chuck drives her back to the parking lot. After going through all these misadventures, Chuck once again invites Cam for a dinner and again she refuses. At home, Chuck unexpectedly finds his voluminous secretary, who, like other women, is eager to take advantage of Chuck's curse. She wants to go down the aisle again, because her husband died four years ago. By the way, the woman recalls that then at the funeral, Chuck promised to help if anything was needed. Chuck says he didn't mean this way of help. As a result, the secretary still pounces on the poor fellow and he gives up, realizing that it is easier to give than to explain why not. In the morning, his friend Stuart beats off the face palms because Chuck, with his reputation, 
has the opportunity to sleep with beauties, and he instead does very strange things. Chuck does not want to take advantage of the position, but Stuart convinces a friend that despite personal pleasure, in the end he will still benefit these women. Approximately, this is what Martin Luther King would have done or Gandhi, according to Stuart. Of course, for a good cause, Chuck starts having sex with different girls in all the time left from sleep and work. The girls are mostly very attractive, although not without oddities. One prays during sex, another reads a magazine about weddings, and the third does not want to take off her t-shirt because her breasts are for future children and not for random lovers. After a fairly short time, Chuck gets bored with this activity, mainly because it is unpleasant for him. After all, the girls do not want him. But the guy next after, Stuart, who masturbated into a grapefruit last night, does not share his feelings. At home, after deleting 108 new messages from insistent girls, Chuck goes to the zoo to propose a date to Cam again, but she again refuses. Her brother, who is standing next to her, offers her to agree, hinting that she has not had sex for a long time. Sam threatens brother if he says one more word, then she will hide all his wheat. Cam, in order to avoid further Chuck's attempts, tries to explain the reason for the refusals. She heard about his curse and knows that he took advantage of this opportunity to the fullest, sleeping with a huge number of women. On the other hand, her beloved Hindu penguins are monogamous. For them, the female is responsible for choosing a partner, and the male walks along the coast for a long time looking for the most beautiful stone to give her. Such a couple is then inseparable for the rest of their lives. Chuck, don't be a fool, compares Cam to penguins, saying that although she is a little clumsy, she is just as beautiful. And after that, Cam agrees to a date. During the walk, Chuck suggests that Cam is a good kisser, hinting that it wouldn't hurt to check. But the girl refuses. Suddenly, she hits her head on a pole and falls. Chuck takes the opportunity and kisses Cam. A couple of days later, they are on their third date and it's about to have sex. Cam has already got rid of 80% of her clothes, when suddenly Chuck's phone rings and at the end Stuart says that Chuck should not sleep with Cam or he will lose her. After all, the curse is real. Stuart called the girls Chuck slept with and they all got married to the next guy after Chuck. Not many girls, but all ones. There are no exceptions. Chuck, using an inhuman will, leaves the already undressed Cam, coming up with a very plausible excuse for this. He tells he has some children in his office who have broken all their teeth. To test the curse completely, Chuck decides to meet and sleep with the most disgusting woman he could find, a sloppy fat woman weighing under 250 kilos with pimples on her back, stomach and sides, and on top of everything else, she is impolite with people. Chuck gives her $200 and drinks almost all the vodka in the restaurant. Then he has sex with her. The next day, Chuck, manipulating the you're my friend argument, sends Stuart to this woman as the next guy. Until the curse is tested, Chuck avoids Cam by pretending to be sick. Cam talks to him a lot on the phone and even sends on pictures without clothes, so it's getting harder for Chuck to endure every day. Finally, Stuart calls to say that after meeting the fat woman, he does not feel like he wants to propose to her, which means there is no curse. Chuck doesn't listen to the rest of the speech. He races to Cam's house. After probably the best night of his life, he wakes up early and sees on TV the news about that same fat woman. They say she also found her happiness by meeting a young, probably blind, man who proposed to her. Chuck calls to ask Stuart what's happening. Stuart admits that he was afraid to take risks and approach the fat woman just to ask what time is it. Chuck is terribly angry with his friend because now the curse is real and Cam, with whom he slept, will marry another. In a strange way, Chuck doesn't care that his best friend Stuart almost married a middle elephant sized lady. In order not to lose Cam, Chuck does not think of anything smarter than stalking her all the time, even at work, flooding up her with food, flowers and gifts. Later, he dresses up as a penguin and starts singing along with the a cappella ensemble he brought with. That evening, Chuck waits for the girl in a car that says almost married. This is the last straw for Cam and she dumps Chuck, who suddenly distraught last days. Later, Chuck asks Stuart to change his appearance in order to ask for a date from his beloved with a new face, but a friend advises him to let the girl go. Chuck's secretary gives the same recommendation. However, while talking to her, a homeless person drops a bottle and Chuck suddenly realizes who is to blame. He goes to the girl who cursed him at school. 
The former golf girl tells him that she was then 10. She does not possess magical abilities and no curse exists. She adds, if Chuck and his girlfriend are meant for each other, they will be together. But if not, he must let her go and move on, deciding to still leave the girl alone. Chuck is sad for days until a friend comes to him. Stuart says that thanks to Chuck, he will marry a girl who has three breasts. That was why she kept her t-shirt on when she slept with Chuck, making up the excuse that breasts were for unborn children. They came to say that Cam is flying to Antarctica today. Chuck stands up and rushes to the airport, buys the last ticket in first class for $17,000, finds Cam on the plane and confesses his love to her. The girl forgives him and says that she will return next Wednesday. It would be quite possible not to hurry. Before leaving the plane, according to Penguin tradition, Chuck gives Cam a pebble. Meanwhile, at her home, golf girl removes the needle from Chuck's doll. A year later, Chuck and Cam fly to Antarctica to hang out with the penguins together. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you are a penguin.